And here he is, up here on the top right-hand side of Oxenlead. In the blue, the Terran player representing Envy. It's Maru. And in the bottom left here, represented by Clash, Red Bull, and also all the fans of the non-Koreans out there, this is Raider. And the Marines have been getting amassed out of that reactive barracks at the front, don't forget. So they are going to be joining in as well. Stim is a ways off, so I don't know if this will hit with Stim, if Maru wants to hit as quickly as possible with that armory. But uh, yeah, my goodness, this is going to be pretty powerful still. That's a lot of Marines. They don't have Stim or anything like that. So Banelings are going to be the key. Reynolds going to make a lot of Banelings, though, and he's very short on gas right now. Five of them in the way. He's completely out of gas. Reynolds tapping that Baneling key as he gets the money. He's got the Spore Crawler out front. A few Queens, a few Banelings are finishing. He's got to try and get those into the middle of the Hellbats. Ooh, that's not too bad. Those Banelings hit those Hellbats real good. And now the Lings are nibbling on the backsides of those Marines as they go to the edge of the creep. Banshee is just now showing up. Obviously, with the lair done, has mobile detection. The Queen's able to back back the Banshees as well. Looks like a good start to the fence of Rainer. And even these Banshees flying over a couple Queens, spreading creep out the front of where Rainer's taking his fourth hatchery. A good defense for the Italian Stallion. Yeah, I almost feel like as Maru, you know Rainer is the best lurker player in the world. You, you want to get a head start on that Siege tank count. Uh, obviously, it means your early pushes aren't going to be as powerful as they would be with Widow Mines. It's hard to kind of sustain that aggression, but it means you can build up to a much bigger one later. Why do we have two tanks in the production tab? Is the factory blocked or contaminated? What is going on with the factory yeah, of that's... Maru? Ah. Contamination. Wow. <laughs> Very nice by Raynor. Ooh. Oh my god, Baylings just all detonated at once there, but it actually didn't kill that many Marines, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, was... and the tank is still alive as well. That was a manual detonate on like 14 yeah. veins. I think he meant to box a few of them and, and set them off, but ooh, a little mistake there from Raynor. A few extra Banelings going down than needed. That being said, the creep is getting out there. The control, and this is so important. Oxide, it's got so many ledges and areas where tanks can set up in deadly positions later on in the game. So the fact that Raynor's already got his map uh, control pushing to the center, if he can get up on Maru's high ground as well with the creep, that's going to be really bad for the Terran. And that's why Maru's pushing it on the creep now. Doesn't want to give Raynor any more map control. And yeah, he is going to be heading towards Lurker Tech. But Maru, he's actually going up to a third factory here, Pig, and they all have tech labs. So we're going to be seeing a ton of tank production here shortly. That's what I like to see from Terran up against Lurkers. Good little bio trades here and there, but... Remember that Raynor, I think he's not too uncomfortable at this stage. He did tweet out just before the tournament went live. He said, yesterday I was practicing to warm up for this 1v4 versus the boys in Archon mode. So he said, you know what? I'm going to be ready for Maru's multi-pronged harassment. I've been practicing versus four players controlling one guy. And uh, you know what? So far, Maru hasn't really done crazy multitasking. It's just little pinpricks. Yeah. I think as Maru's army comes through the middle, that's really where we're going to see the big clash that matters. And Raru, of course, still threatening with Metavax. 3-3 three, three upgrades are on the way now. You're absolutely right, Pig. Maru's slowing this game way down. He has no intention of going anywhere except with dropships. It's a good way to play this map as well because there's limited bases. You can see this is not a comfortable position for Raynor. He's like, dude, when are you pushing? Zerg vs Terran is all about defending your pushes. Why aren't you pushing on the front? And Maru's just Ooh. sitting there. He's like, dude, I'm mentally prepared for this game. You aren't. And he gets the hatchery and saves a ton of Marines as well. I think he only lost a couple. So beautiful play there from Maru, getting another great hatchery pickoff. Playing super efficiently here against Reyna so far. Definitely got the better end of the trades. Reyna's had enough. He wants to try and attack here, but oh, maybe rethinking it, reconsidering his option there. A little bit of indecisiveness from Reyna, losing a few units for free, but at least they're the cheap ones. Don't underestimate how much this can throw you off. If you're in Raynor's shoes, you don't practice this sort of game ever. Like, yeah, sure, you might get to this stage, but it's after 10 minutes of back and forth. It's not meant to happen Ooh. just yet. Oh, oh, Lurker drop plus double Nidus. The Lurker's going to try and defend those Nidus Worms potentially, but no, they actually borrow a little further back. Adapter Town's not quite done. Raynor's going to push the right side at the same moment. The Nidus is, they're not going to get up. The Nidus's have been denied here, and the two Lurkers picked off in the main base as well. Reyna went straight up the middle of the map there with the bulk of his forces, but didn't manage to find an angle there on Maru. He's dropping the Spire. Reyna throwing everything at the wall, but nothing really sticking at the moment. Oh man, this, te this Terran is covered in Teflon pig. They just can't make anything stick here. How often do you see three planetaries in the production tab at a time? Maru is entrenching the entire map right now. Tanks, ghosts, planetaries going up. Raynor realizes he's got to do something. He's got to do it soon. If he wants to put a dent in Maru, he's got to go. And those Banelings, they are going to take out that command oh. center. 
Yeah, the planetary picked off there. Rayner hitting the economy. Obviously not for free. A lot of banelings died. 12 SCVs died as well. In the main base, in come the lurkers. Looks like Mario also hitting the drone line on the south side of the map as well. Action absolutely everywhere. Uh, Mario bringing everything into the main here, it seems like, to try and get rid of the lurkers and the nice worms. And Lurker gets a few good shots off. I think he kind of picked off a ghost there on the way through. Yeah, the Lurkers causing a bit of havoc. 16 workers do fall. Another Nidus in the natural as well is Raynor. I think he's all loaded up in the Nidus Worms because I don't see any army streaming across the map right now. Uh, uh, yeah, but the Nidus Worms don't have the, uh, the the white bar on them, so at least those two Nidus Worm uh, entrance points, I have to filter myself here, are uh, just completely empty at the moment. Vipers now here for Raynor. 107 drones, by the way. This kid is rocking a serious economy. An incredible income advantage here for Raynor. But again, without killing the Terran, if the Terran maxes out, get those 3-3 upgrades and a good number of ghosts up, you haven't won this game. I mean, an extra 30 drones doesn't make your army win the fight. Not at all, Maynard. And, Ooh. Uh, oh, he's going to take out those SCVs. That planetary could fall if he focuses it. Blinding Cloud will run out after a little bit. The Hydra's taking out a couple of these siege tanks. Remember, the Hydra's only have plus one attack, and the ghosts slaughter planetary. them. Oh, the planetary is so low and it just gets picked off. Of course, Maru has a high hit point command center. He can finish off. Maru also picking off that top left hatchery, which was very cheeky of Raider, just running out of places on the map to expand to because he's completely covered this map in creep and hatcheries. And Maru getting rid of that nice worm. Easy peasy there. Plus three attacks starting on that armory for the tanks that he does have. And the tank count of Maru is still pretty convincing, i got to say. A good tank count at the moment. Marauders being prioritized over Marines at the moment as well. So he has a very strong armored front line. And, uh, I mean, it really feels like Mario needs to make something happen. He's been maxed for a hot minute. We saw Solar take down Mario in the late game with Broodlord Corruptor in Festa Viper usage. He did that very well. Excellently. Well, I say take him down. I mean, put himself in a winning position. I guess I should clarify since Mario ended up winning that game. But, <laughs> oh, oh, Snipe is a pretty good ability. Blinding Cloud does not <laughs> stop Snipe. Uh, that right. that was just a, a massively awesome trade for Mario once again. And the thing is, Raynor needs to be sneaky. He needs to come in from surprising angles, abduct a few tanks, get him pull out. He can't be just showing his armies into the sensor towers and then just hanging around because Mario's ghosts are always going to move to respond. They're going to get the, the Snipes and... Honestly, it feels like Minor is hitting a bit of a dead end. He feels a little bit stuck right now. Oh man, a lot of drones here on the bottom right as well. You know, Reyna's trying to even expand on the Terran side of the map. Maru, of course, never letting it happen. Reyna gears up for a big attack here at the planetary. The Lurkers kind of separated from the pack. They're going to get target fired down by the Marines and Rorders as they pull back to defenses. Some blinding clouds going down from the Vipers as well. They don't have a ton of energy either on those Vipers now after those blinding clouds. So all Maru needs to do is just chill. I don't know how Reyna pushes into this again. Well, you can't even hang out there because the ghosts, whenever you hang out near their, their defenses like that, the ghosts can just walk forward and snipe them. So these little attacks, I really dislike. I think if he comes in, abducts all the Vikings, kills them, runs away, that's good. Lands some chain fungals on the Vikings, runs away, that's good. But otherwise, just kind of chipping at the edges, what he's really doing is he's bashing his own head into the wall of Maru just to chip the paint off a planetary here or there. Like it's not <laughs> actually killing anything while he's losing so many resources. So at a certain point, Raynor is going to realize the efficiency just isn't cutting it for him, and he's going to have to change tax. Uh, for now, we do see a few extra queens in production. I'm not sure if that's just for creep and injects, or if he's actually going to add those to the army. Uh, we talked about spellcaster usage is an option for Raynor. Another option is swarm hosts. Uh, ooh, ooh, does get a planetary. This is costly, but he is making inroads into Maru's territory, but there's just layers of tanks upon layers. Yeah, I mean, he's not getting critical damage here, but he's definitely punching Maru and hurting him here by picking off those planetaries, picking off uh, potentially some production here. He didn't quite get those factories, though. Maru is still making three siege tanks at once, and he made that extra two starports. So I think he's on three starports at the moment with three reactors. Looks like he's reactoring out Liberators and Vikings here. So not only is he going to have an incredibly strong mechanical ground force with his tank count, he's going to have a pretty nice air force as well. So he's really getting a very expensive army up here for Terran. Yeah, with no Spire upgrades, Raynor's not going to be able to swap into Broodlords or Corruptors or anything like that. Not that it's the uh, best army necessarily to go for. He's still looking for angles here, is Raynor. I mean, he's still maxed. He's still got a bank. Don't get me wrong. Raynor still has many chances in this game, leaving all of his evolution chambers on red hit points with the Vipers there. Very cute. <laughs> Vipers looking for yoinks. Going to grab at least one tank in. 
They do grab that one tank, it takes a little bit for it to go down, so it's still kind of just firing at Zerg units. The Bailing's going for the mineral line here, or kind of going past the mineral line, actually. A little bit of a shift cue there from Reyna. Oh. But he is definitely fighting damage. There we go, the Bailing's coming in now, hitting the SCVs very nicely. 14 of them going down. Planetary is going to get picked off there at 3 o'clock. Nice pick off for Reyna, getting into the Terran's face, taking down a ton of SCVs, knocking Maru down to 40 here. But I'm still worried, Pig, and I'll tell you why. Maru is up a lot of army supply right now, and I do believe Reyna spent his lava. Yeah, he's got a lot of orbitals to drop mules as well does Maru, so he can hang on 40 SCVs, that's not the end of the world, it's, as I said, the resources running out on Raynor's side of the map, that's the issue, so, I mean, killing a base there is good, but he's also got to deny the top left, if he can rotate over there and get rid of that, then I'm going to start becoming a believer in Raynor's strategy, for now though, it's looking like he's put a dent in Maru, he's going to need to do something more. It's like that 3 o'clock once again being threatened here just by some 3-3 uh, three, three Adrenal Zerglings, or rather 2-2, two, two. they're on their way to plus 3 attack. And uh, they are doing their job here, those Lings, the most inexpensive part of Reyna's army doing their job. Just getting rid of a refinery, slowing things down at 3 o'clock, any single edge matters here when you're this high level. Maru is also replenishing those SCVs, Reyna still on an 86 drone count, he's going to get a free tank here for no problem whatsoever. Down it goes, once again lifting up 3 o'clock, still slowing down the Terran's mining. Good moves from Reyna with his Lings, and finally we're seeing some spy units come out. Seven Corruptors going to add to the army here of Reyna, who is once again maxed out, and once again spent his bank. Yeah, Corruptor's going to be pretty worthless, I think. Uh, maybe use him for sniping libs, but maybe going to be using Oh, this choke point! Oh my lord. Oh, these pushes are just madness from Raynor, and they are not working out. He, his lurk is going to be annihilated. He's got a lot. It's a lack of patience here from Raynor, unfortunately. Maru is stoic as a rock, stable, and he just manages to weather the storm really here, just like a cliff face against the ocean. I mean, eventually it does get eroded, but I don't think Raynor's got that kind of time. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. EG! It is a multiple prong attack slash harassment here. So Maru going to try and poke with the Hellions while the Liberator goes out across the map to try and hit the Zerg's drones. This could marry up with, you know, Marines and a medevac as well. Uh, at the moment, it looks like Maru's just got the Hellions as much as a mobile force. Haven't seen too much uh, Marine production until just now. So yeah, keen on seeing how, Maru, how much Maru gets done with this start for the drop. At the moment, just playing Bio again, obviously dropping the second and third barracks. No one really likes to mech anymore these days. It's going to be pretty much Bio from here on out. Nice, quick fourth base here for Raynor. He likes that fast fourth base. He uh, knows that that can give him a lot of production. And if he shuts this pressure down, having that fourth finished, it's going to allow him to just drone like crazy, get four bases of minerals mining. But the pressure's starting up. Viking coming in as the third command center lands. The Hellions are rotating around, looking for an opening as that lib slides around the back. The Spore does get a few hits on it. Raynor seems to be well prepared and aware so far. Yeah, these Spores were also perfectly positioned for this Liberator. It's not gonna go, uh, it's not gonna get too much done here. It gets not even a shot off here. So the drones, queens all stay alive. A Hellion picked off on the outskirts here at the edge of the creep as well. Just in pure Raynor fashion, beautiful early game. Zero damage pretty much there from Maru. Oh, we'll have to see exactly what he's got in mind. I'd be looking to bust my opponent after that last game. If I was Raynor and Mutas are going to be the, uh, the, the go-to with the Spire here. A bit more mobile force going to allow you to kind of poke and prod and find weakness. So that's going to be a nice way to start off with a little bit more potential movement. So far, the drop's finding nothing. Look at the creep spread once again, dude. I, if it wasn't for that last game being so good for Maru, I would be looking at this and be like, dude, you gotta do something right now. Like, <laughs> the creep's getting out of control. Raynor is starting to smother this map. Maru, we know, is happy to play a non-standard situation in the late game. And it's really on Raynor. He should be coming around and smashing this fourth base. He's got to attack the third, attack the fourth, and swap between those two constantly. Uh, the Bailing actually got a lot more there than I thought they would. Killed quite a few bio units. Maru maybe not thinking that they would get that far with the mine and the bio tanking there. Uh, double Lurkadan going down for Raynor. As you know, players at home, double Lurkadan means you make Lurkas twice as fast. Okay, finally adds an Overseer to these muters. He was missing that for a little bit. He lost it in the previous fight. So finally replaces <laughs> it and can snipe Widow Mines again. And Raynor, I mean, he's still in a very powerful position. That creep is covering everything. I was talking about how I think Maru should have no problem getting a fifth on this map if he plays like the last game. <laughs> right now, there's creep in front of him at a fifth base. Like, he is getting oh, yeah. smothered. Raynor is coming in with another big wave. He wants to take this planetary out. 
Oh, and he might get it if there's enough Banelings, and he does get it. Lovely pick off there for Rain. It looks like he had the perfect amount of Banelings, actually, to get the job done there. Good. Down goes the Planetary, and his Hives finish up as well. So in all seriousness, as I was joking before, the double Lurker Dan does mean that he'll be able to get double upgrades for those Tier 3 Lurkers. So he'll have the Adaptive Talons and also Seismic Spines right away there. So a pretty cool play, but it is expensive, of course, to get this double Lurker Dan. But, you know, Rainer, as he is in real life, not short of cash. Raynor should really be breaking down those rocks on the right of this map just to allow him to stomp this army in the top right. He's got muters and that gives him control. I think Raynor's uh, focusing on the Lurker swap a bit too early. You do not want to lose these muters. You need those ooh. to punish this army hanging out in the top right. Mine's getting some good volleys off on those lings. In come the Banes to help out with the Hellbats. Maru still has a lot of bio underneath these medevacs here, or rather enough to be threatening. And we got another force in the middle of the map here with the Thors. In come the Lurkers now for Reyna, forcing Maru to lift up here at the fifth base at the north side here at one o'clock, but through the middle, Maru just cleaving through that crease spread. Yeah, Maru's retaking his fourth behind this, so his economy's not too bad at all right now. And Raynor, oh, he's trying is. to get into Lurkers, but he's not quite there. Seismic Spines, so the Lurker speed, the Lurker range upgrades, they're only about halfway done. So Raynor, at this moment, he wants to swap into that composition that's so good versus the Widowmine Marauder. He's not there just yet. So Maru really utilizing Medivacs to the utmost efficacy here. And these Thors just remain alive. He continues to do damage with them, continues to trade with them. Rainer feeling the pressure, feeling really impatient here by the looks of things. Wants to hit back, and he has to, I feel. So kind of damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. In comes the Banelings, looking for that SCV line, looking for another planetary bust. Oh, this is some good damage. The planetary does go down. There's still a tank in the back. Another one sieging. The units drop on top. A crazy <laughs> hot drop on top of the Lurkers and Hydras. Maru cleans that army up. Yeah, he loses a planetary, but he's already got a fifth up behind it. He lifts the orbital, moves it to his fourth. Maru is actually smashing right now. He's looking so good. Uh, indeed. We do have plus three Carapace about to finish here for Reyna, but not as much army as he had before. He just lost a lot of it there at that planetary. Uh, Maru, of course, as most Terrans do, will be building command centers next to their other command centers so they can retake it just in case, but also to have plenty of scans and plenty of static defense as well if they want to go for the planetaries. It's super late game. Maru's bank getting spent on another macro cycle there. He's maxed out again, and his army is looking terrifying. Piggy, he's got ghosts now as well to take the fight directly to the lurkers. Five base up against Raynor, six bases. Raynor needs to have a big economic advantage and just being up one base is probably not too good for him. He really needs to keep that going. He doesn't know about the fifth base below. And that fifth base, he ran straight past it. If in that previous bust, he just killed the fifth right away, it would have been a nice trade, but he lost his whole army in that previous fight. He still doesn't know about the fifth base and Raynor here, I think giving Maru a little bit too much room. Well, he's going to try and make something happen here at this planetary for Mario. Unfortunately, this is where all the ghosts are as well. Banelings coming in to try and get rid of those pesky tier oh. 3 bio units. But once again, the fight not looking good for Reyna. Reyna just cannot win a fight against Mario here. He hasn't done it in game 1, and he's still not doing it in game 2. I mean, he certainly is. The uh, the mountain keeps coming to Muhammad here. And he wants to fight the Zerg, and the Zerg keeps coming to him with these with these big, aggressive lurker attacks with the Lings and the Banelings. And while Reyna will occasionally pick off a planetary, it costs him so much when he does it because the lurkers generally die, and obviously the Banelings do blow up to uh, to do damage. So now Maru is in that situation where, once again, his army is pretty big. It's a lot bigger than the Zergs. Reyna's army definitely doesn't suck. He's got the Vipers now as well, but with a good place EMP or Snipe or Viking usage here, those Vipers could disappear. And there's the EMPs from Maru. In comes Reyna with this big attack in third place, which does look a little vulnerable, but come the reinforcements for the Terran. Mass Siege tank just annihilating the Banelings. Can he oh, at least man. get some SCVs? He gets a few SCVs, 15 of them, but the base just lifts off and he loses a ton of units. Once again, damage done to Maru, but nothing critical. Raynor gets a bit of an opening. He starts a great Aspire as well, so he's thinking about that swap into Broodlords, which I really think a big wave of surprise Broodlords can be a game ender, but you've got to support it with Infestors if you're up against Ghosts. And Oxide, a lot smaller map here than Death Aura, so Reyna does have a little bit more room to expand as well. You can see that like at this point in, the, in, in game one, Reyna didn't have any more places to take hatcheries, so he's got plenty of places here for those 98 drones to continue to mine for him. He has been definitely dwarfing Maru's income for all of this game here. Another big Ling flood through the natural. Meanwhile, big fight here on the left side. The Lurkers left alone. Can Maru break through them, though? He doesn't have too many, too much bio on the run-through. And here we go, Reyna's Lings getting on top of two of those three factories, getting into the natural in the third as well. Big move from Rainer. 
finally the mass zergling this is it everything maru's got is based around countering lurkers and banelings it's all tanks it's like he's got like liberators tanks turrets ghosts Massling apparently just runs in and beats all of those things. Maru, how do you deal with that? Maybe he needs to make sure he's got more Marines or more Ghosts spread across those base. Maybe more extra planetary fortresses kind of just uh, shoring up the defenses in multiple areas. But those last few trades have been spectacular for Raynor. He's not maxing out right now, but he's got the gas bank for days. He's going to go into Broodlords next up. And the next wave is going to be pretty interesting here, Pig. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, if we could see the unit stab as this fight uh, comes in, I'd love to see the numbers. I think there's a decent Viking count. They're really well spread as well. Eight Vikings, ten Ghosts, no Thors on the ground, no Marines either. Those Broodlords are going to cause uh, a problem for those Siege Tanks. Certainly, and I think that Raynor actually hasn't got Pathogen Glands yet. Looks like these Infestors are hatching with not quite enough energy for Fungals just yet. So, going to take a little bit before they're super scary, but again, the Ghosts could get the EMPs anyway. So Reyna just slowly starting to chip away here at this planetary on the high ground for Maru that he's been desperately trying to hold on to. Ooh, Maru gives up the base, moves to the right side of the map. Anitis Worm answers for Raynor. He's got some spine crawlers that'll do a little bit to slow this down. Ling's moving over there as well. Raynor's going to try and use the Ling Hydra. He doesn't have a very big army there, though. Is this going to work out for Raynor? I mean, the Lings got in there, but they kind of disappeared as quickly as they arrived there. And the Snipes yeah. with the tanks erase those Hydras. So no, he does not get the job done. He does at least, of course, get rid of that planetary with the Broods, but they're kind of just sitting there floating around in space. And now the drones under threat. Keep in mind that Reyna had 30 drones oversaturated over there as well. So he just lost a ton of his mining. Oh, those drones should have run straight north. That was a big mistake. Reynolds got to rotate his army over there. Right now, he's saying, no, 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 it's too slow. I've got to stay on the left. No, 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 he has uh -oh. to move his army back to this right side of the map. The Nidus Worm doesn't find too much. The Vikings and the Thor dealing with that. Uh, Raynor is doubling down on Broodlords against Thor Viking right now. This can work, uh -oh. but it's going to come down to the Spellcasters, and he's got to protect his bases, but he's just not moving to defend this right side. I uh, thought like Reyna was uh, was starting to take control here, starting to push Maru against the ropes, but now the Terran just cold, methodical plays, starting to trade again and again and again, and great decision making as well from Maru, finding himself in the driver's seat one more time. Reyna does still have this big fleet of air units for the Zerg and the Infestors as well, and the Ghosts are really low in energy, so it is definitely a situation where the Zerg could potentially take a great fight here in the next few minutes. These Broodlords need to be a little bit quicker to rotate. They've got to stay in more of a central location. Raynor's worried about them getting jumped on, so he's been very conservative with their movement. I want them to be further forward, jumping on these armies. I think Raynor's got the numbers here, and he's coming in from behind. Is Maru going to be able to take out this base? If Maru goes in any deeper, he's going to be forced to fight this, and that could get very dicey. We got some Corruptors here and a full energy Viper to help out with those Vikings. Going to have to look for a Parasitic Bomb right oh. in the middle of the pack there. The Infestors, are the Vikings. the Infestors are clumped. This is looking really scary. Watch out for those EMPs, Maynard. Right now, Raynor has not split any of his Infestors off. That can be a game loser. The Broodlords come forward. They get a volley off. One more goes down. A Fungal catches two Vikings. Doesn't hit the center of the pack. 16 Vikings in the air. This is an incredibly close back and forth. As you said, a Parasitic Bomb would be a great initiate to this fight. But as it is, both players are waiting for the other one to come forward and clump up. Tanks getting some shots off of the Spawn Oh, big fungal there. There we go. Parasitic Bomb needs to come with that fungal as well. There it is. Maru oh. going to take a lot of damage on these Vikings. Huge Parasitic Bomb with the fungal chain. A great hit to the Viking count of Maru. The count of Maru's Vikings gets dwindled there, but still looks strong enough to be a threat to the Broodlords. Maru doesn't feel confident to hold this position anymore. Starts to evacuate it with his army. And Raynor, he's in an efficiency game now, retaking the base on the right. He he's actually doesn't even have enough minerals to retake the rich gas base on the right. Uh, he has obviously, obviously lost so many more resources, which is why the way Raynor wins this game is holding all of the middle bases. He's got to deny any more bases from Maru, who's, by the way, Maru's mining is dwindling. And Maru's going to counter push on the right. A good choice by Raynor to give it up, but he loses a bunch of lurkers to the snipe. Takes out a planetary in return. Both players' economy is dropping down into a very, very low place. I think Maru's realized that winning the fight against the Broodlord Infester is not likely here. He doesn't have enough Vikings and Thors and also enough Ghosts to help him out on the ground either. So he's just going to try and be where that army isn't. The Broodlords are so slow. That's one of their main weaknesses here. And the Infestors really have to be with the Broods for them to be as powerful as possible. So Maru does go to the right side of the map and make sure that if Raina comes to his side and does damage, he's going to get some in return. So Maru hits back. But of course, this game balanced on a wire at the moment. It's really hard 
hard to call who's winning at this situation. You know, Maru's playing so smart though, he realized if he can just land an orbital on the right, one round of mules there, a couple thousand resources just like that. Because of the nature of those, oh, Raynor with the Zergling does scout it, which is very good. But I think, yeah, if Maru just empties mules on that base, his income will shoot up like crazy. Oh, Thor caught out in the open. Uh, Raynor's yeah, only factories are here too. one base. The base is in the middle left, that's Raynor's base. Like right now, that's his income. And it's getting dry right now. So honestly, as long as Maru just keeps dragging this out, drops an orbital, drops some mules, gets a few thousand resources. This is all Raynor's competing with it. 50 drones on four mineral patches, Maynard. It is just a trickle. Both of them are running very dry right now. Maru just sent 70% of his SCVs over to 3 o'clock as well. A lot of SCVs going over to that, that orbital. A very low mining situation here for both of these players. Ah, oh, man, uh, this rotation of, of Rainer, it really feels like Rainer's starting to take control of the south side of the map with Maru taking control of the top right. But Maru's army coming in here. He's like, all right, this is enough. I don't want to lose these factories. I don't want to lose this base here in the south. I need to fight him here. Oh, that ghost energy count looking a lot more healthy. The Thor count looking good as well. Maru going to break off a few spires there as they cloak. Let's see what he can get done. He's going for the, the big EMPs. Oh. Can he get the EMPs? Oh, whiffs there. Good spready on the Infestors. I'd like to see Raynor keep one or two of those Infestors off hotkey, off the control group, a little bit further back from the army. Uh, I'd also like to see him have maybe some Ling Bane or something that could just like emergency jump on the ghosts and disrupt them if he gets in trouble. Because his army is so slow and immobile, Raynor's got to be super duper careful to not get caught out and exposed. And honestly, 13 Vikings, 6, 7 Thors, 14 Ghosts. If they are able to connect with the Broodlords, 12 Broodlords will not last very long. It's a very lacking amount of actual damage output that Raynor has, and that's why he swapped into Neural Parasite. He's going to try and steal the Thors off Maru. If he can pull that off, he could turn this game around massively. Absolutely. we got a stealthy, sneaky Infestor boy over here underneath those Thors. I mean, as soon as that Infestor is scanned, it will be deleted. EMP's coming down, but once again, Maru missing the center of the pack of those Spellcasters. Parasitic Bomb hit the men of that there. Not the big critical target for the Parasitic Bombs either. So neither player really finding a ton of damage. Maru nearly picking off a Brutal Lord at the edge of the pack, but not quite there either. Both players nearly getting a little bit done, but as the dust settles, both of them still with all their units just waiting for the actual fight to begin. Whoa! Ooh. Oh my lord, that army! Oh! Big EMP and Big Fungal, both sides trading spells, gonna try and chain the Fungals. Oh going my god! It is rain or Parasitic Bomb landing! And Neural's going down as well, but the Infestor's getting deleted there with the scans. Oh my god, all the Infestors are dead here. Maru, he's killed all the Infestors. Does he have enough Vikings to fight the Brutalords? He's targeting them down one at a time, fighting the Corruptors with the Thors to assist and the Ghost to assist. That engagement for Reyna looked all right at the start there with those Fungals, but Maru with too much when the clouds part. Yeah, if he didn't land the Neurals, he was always going to lose that fight. Once that big EMP landed, and he only had three or four Infestors left, Raynor just did not have the numbers. GG. What is Mari going for as a follow-up with the CC first build? Is it you know, a multiple barracks opener, which we know it is. This is the CC first 2-1-1 from Mari by the looks of it. Extra Queens on the way, Overlords creep spreading forwards. That reactor going down on the factory there, starport building as well. And the Overlord's going to start to just wander around, double check everything that happens. I imagine Raynor, upon seeing this, uh, may opt for an earlier Baneling Nest once he sees the second barracks, but so far those Marines doing a very good job of keeping his vision out. Historically in the series so far, Raynor has been very good at holding these timings in the early game from Maru. Can he do it again? These Ling's going around the backside here. Yeah, I love that choice. They're not going to be good initially against the Hellbats, so you might as well just do a run-by. There is a wall up, but there's a... Oh, it's not up! Whoa. It's not up! The command set is exposed, the work is exposed! The Marines getting on top of straight away already. Okay, a lot of SCVs going to go down. Those three Marines doing what they can, and they are going to eventually defend. That could have been even worse if those Marines weren't reacted with so quickly. Maru pulled them behind the mineral line, and because of that, loses eight SCVs where he could have lost 20. And all eight of Rainer's Queens off hatchery duty join the creep spreading queens to just get on that front line and bat away at the Hellions and the Marines there of Maru. A good start for Rainer. That run by pretty inspired. Did a lot of damage there. Maru picks another angle. The Ling actually caught the inside of it. Good defense by Maru, but yeah, what Maru, Maru was meant to be sharking around Zerg territory for the next few minutes with this build. <laughs> Instead, his Hellions have had to go home just to defend, just to secure his own expansion. Once again, 
Six minutes in the game, Raynor's already ahead. It's been like this three games in a row. Raynor is just outplaying Maru in the early stages, but man, Maru just makes you forget about that in the late game, doesn't he? Maya is the choice once again. I think that did great for Raynor in the early stages. Uh, even if there's Widow Mines, I would not mind Raynor going hard into the muters. I feel like Mutaling Bane, if you're ahead of your opponent and you're as fast as Raynor is, you're going to always find a way in. It's such a mobile composition, gives you so many angles you can work on, you force missile turrets and all this sort of stuff. So I really like this style from Raynor. I love the opening. He's up 20 workers. His fourth is established. His creep is great. Uh, there's nothing I have except uh, compliments for Raynor's, uh, you know, first eight, nine minutes of the game, but I, uh, I'm, I'm very curious because Widow Mine Drop, that's a double Mine Drop? Oh my god. Yeah, there's six Widow Mines here, Pig. <laughs> I mean, Armory obviously is done, so they're going to have the ability to, uh, to, I guess, remain cloaked when they burrow as well. So in they come. Oh, on top of the Spore Crawler, it doesn't really matter there. So Maru going for a Mine Drop at the third base, also in the natural as well. Here comes Maru right next to the Spire. So while the Widow Mines do get cleaned up here, he does at least see the Spire. Oh, that one gets a connection. Seven drones going down. More drones than I thought. So Maru finds some damage and gets the scout off. Maru is mine heavy so far in this game. Mine stores very good versus Mutaling Bane. There's no siege tanks yet. So arguably a Lurker swap would be good in this scenario. It's why he did it last game in the same sort of situation. But I still think there's a lot that can be done with Mutaling Bane right here, right now. I'm absolutely with you. Obviously, with a lot of mines, you can take a really good fight against the Mutaling Bane because of that splash damage if Raynor messes up the engagement. But historically, he's been so good at dealing with those mines, with this unit comp. He hasn't been losing everything really haphazardly against that kind of comp with this kind of, uh, you know, fast and uh, sort of backstabby army here that Raynor's going for. Hive begins immediately there for Raynor. 2-2, two, two, very close to both players. Actually, upgrades very close to both of them here on both sides. Hive obviously going to be on the front there for Raynor, but uh, fully <laughs> fully hit pointed Hive is very, very tanky, very hard to pick off for the Terran. A Ling oh! run by there from Raynor. The door is down and he's in again. That could be disastrous and great Baneling split there already. The natural getting ransacked. The Muters are going to run in on the north side. Raynor, I can feel that comeback starting. He definitely is feeling the momentum. <laughs> focused, his eyes just killer focused right now. His Muters fly and get a turret on the third. Pulls back for now, seeing a Widow Mine backing up the turret in the main. But 25 workers go down. And this is, of course, Raynor going to seven bases versus a Terran who's barely establishing a fourth. I actually feel like Mara would do, would do really well if he did push here, but him Bailey slowing down by. like this. Oh yeah, big Bailey run by getting through that wall in there. Uh, he actually doesn't have too many SCV damages. He mainly kills depots. The muters yep. though, getting that planetary pick off on the north side. Yep, I mean, those depots, that's kind of what I was worried about. Five depots for 40 Banelings, is it worth it? Questionable. Um, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Uh, mass Baneling is really not what you want here. Obviously, because Raynor's so high on workers, he needs a supply efficient unit to stop a push when it comes. It's just that, yeah, Maru is is, is not quite stepping onto creep just yet. He's, he's darting around defending his bases, and that's all he's focused on for now. Raynor's got to keep doing damage, keep doing the run buys, keep doing the multi-prong. And they're starting to throw in some Ultras as well. Wintermine nearly gets a shot off, but he turns and fires. Picks off those Wintermines. Tanks Ooh. again. Exposed and picked off. Easy pickings there for these Muters with their plus two attack. Now, and these Muters have been the MVPs for Raynor. They've absolutely given him a lovely spot here in this game. Yes, the Marines get some pepper on them, but I'm not sure any of them actually died there. No more air upgrades is a little bit of a bummer here for Raynor, but hey, he finds another Widow Mine, another Siege Tank, the Muters, oh. ooh, a lot of Muters go down, but the Banelings cleanse that planetary with their acidic fire. They do indeed, getting rid of that base there with the Banelings again, that cost Raynor a lot of money, but he's not short of a bank here, Pig. 7,000 minerals in the bank and change along with nearly 3k gas in the bank here for Raynor, and he's going to be able to use that extra supply cap on Ultras as well as round out those Lings and Banes as well. So his army is getting slowly more powerful here. And finally, Maru gets 3-3 done after losing those engineering bays. Ooh, that Muta Count's getting low. I mean, they've been the real damage dealer this game. So part of me, even now at 15 minutes, is like, dude, keep building Mutas. Don't stop. Like, <laughs> rebuild. Get, just hang out at 30 Mutas, dude. They ignore Siege Tanks. They can focus down Widow Mines before they find the, the Mutas are the secret to your success. I feel like it's when Maru's able to clear creep and run around on the map like this, that's where he actually starts to do okay in these series. 
I'm with you. I mean, these meters are absolutely being the MVPs for Raider. I'll say it again for sure, but this ground army of Ultra Baneling oh. has been doing work as well. Baneling streaming in and cleansing this base once more. The Ultra is still healthy as well as they come on in trying to give those Thors the big Kaiser Cuddles here. Taking down Ghosts as well and Marauders and Marines. Not too many SCVs died there, but the base does get busted and a lot of the army of Maru also got busted there. Ah oh, man, not cheap for Rainer, but again, he is just dumpstering the income of Maru right now. Yeah, I think that's totally fine. I mean, he's got to, I think, rebuild some more of his muters or corruptors and go around because the top base is being established as well right now for Maru. And if Maru can get both those bases up, as long as he can kind of remax between each wave, technically he could still stabilize. I think this is perfect from Raynor though, right? Four or five Ultras up front, lots of Banes, smash in and just overwhelm everything on the ground. And because the Muters are still being such a nuisance as well, this is really difficult for Maru to deal with. Uh, finally, looks like the age of the Muter might be over. Those, th those Ghosts getting on top of them and taking them down. The Ultra's coming in for another swipe Ooh. here. Oh, the Banelings heading into the SCV line. A lot of them lost this is finding as well. The Orbital actually dies there to the melee units. Could have been lifted, but that just means that more space for these Ultras to get in and get us around. All these two Ghosts on the edge of the pack get clipped there by the Banes. And this 12 o'clock base, it's not happening, Pig. In fact, it's oh! dead. Oh, he doesn't even lift it. Maru, of course, is so on the back foot and he doesn't even have a wall on the natural anymore. Widow Mines defend those Banelings. Oh! SCVs falling on the natural. Raynor is in his element. And I'll tell you what, Maru, I honestly think, has had much better late game than Raynor. But Raynor's early to mid game is so powerful that it affords him this ability to just swarm over the top. Okay, so he's just going to go straight for a factory there. And, uh... Imagine a Marine should probably be popping out in a little bit, but actually no production on the barracks just yet. He's just trying to go react to Hellions. These Lings are going to just walk right in and do big damage. They certainly are. Who needs Ling speed? In they go. No Reaper to worry about. No nothing to worry about. That that, that natural is going to be slowed down here. Reactor's not even going to happen. The Reaper coming back immediately there. I mean, this, this already is very annoying for Maru. Yeah, I think Rain will add some inside info about the build that Maru is going to open for. A bit of a change up here gets him an amazing position. Maru's opening was very greedy. I mean, he did a CC first in the previous game, so maybe Rain was hoping for something similar. Already multiple SCVs delaying the factory, delaying the second depot, so he's supply blocked right now and delaying the command center. A disastrous start there for Maru. He's already building Overlord, so maybe just a 33 drone Ravagerling. He's only on one gas. So he's not going to be able to afford a lot of Ravages. It's going to be more of just a Roachling thrust. <laughs> well, I mean, the thrust could uh, definitely kill if it hits something vital. So let's see how Rainer goes here. Obviously, the Overlords are done, and it is time to make the Roaches. That's the first time we've seen the Roach Warren here in the game for Rainer. Maybe the time that uh, works out perfectly for him here. That low ground wall just too tempting. And Oh, my God. Oh, Pro the production tab, Maynard. I was like, Vi what? Viking doesn't help against this, but you know what? Maru's whole plan was to deny information and go to Starport BC or Battle Cruise Banshee. All right, well, if he I does that, he is very, three very port. dead. Three, oh, three Port Banshee? What? You this know what, Three Port Banshee? Three Port Banshee will kill these roaches, but he needs to get there. <laughs> Ah, uh, he's not starting any of those units yet. The roaches are already almost at his base. They are going to butcher his economy, knock off oh, his no. third gas mining. Oh, oh he actually no. gets... That was meant to be a fusion core, and it was a third Oh, Maru's starboard. dead. Did you see uh -oh. the look on his face? Maru yes. had this big, awkward smile, like he was like, oh, did I just do that? And then he sees the roaches walk in, and he's like, you're kidding me. <laughs> you're kidding me, man. Yeah, his face is uh, telling a thousand words here. <laughs> it's just like, oh, God, really? In game four. Oh, man. I mean, Rainer's not going to front door pretty hard here. That thing's about to go down. Here comes some Hellions to the backside there with the Reapers. Of course, the low hit point. R Roach is getting turned into Ravages here. Rain is in. The call is coming from inside the house. Maru going for the emergency wall off, but that's not going to last too long against these Ravager Biles and these Roach target fires. Yeah, cute wall off there for Maru, buying time for his two Banshees. Maru, if he wants to stay in this game, he absolutely will be able to defend eventually with the Banshees. The Hellion counterattack. Ooh, a nice little bit there. Ooh. Remember, no Zergling speed was made, so those are slow Zerglings. Uh, not exactly the natural predator of the Hellion, the slow Zergling and the drone, but the Roaches and the Ravages oh, are doing 10 times more damage on the other side of the map. 
They certainly are. Double Banshee is out here. Obviously, a big supply lead for Rainer. Biles down the last few bits of the Terran infrastructure on the top of the ramp there. The SCVs have nowhere to run and not too many places to hide either. The Double Banshees will eventually get the job done. They're going to start taking things down. But has Maru taken too much damage? The answer is yes. And Rainer wins game four. And we are going to go to the ace match. Maru is going to open up with the six Marines and a Widow Mine drop into the main. And he's going to quickly swap the factory and the barracks over. And he's going to try and drive five Hellions into the natural. Just after that drop hits, we saw this find massive damage against Rogue. Let's see if Raynor's prepared for it. All right, well, in comes that medevac. Obviously, Raynor's Overlord sees it. He's going to have to scramble his defenses. The Lings were going towards the natural there. The Queens are on front door duty with these Hellions. And here comes the drop with the Marines. Yeah, Maru not finding anything in the main base just yet. The Widowmine actually hits the Queen. She takes one for the team there. Natural now under fire, but no more Widowmines here for Maru. It's just Marines. As long as those Lings are ready for the drop Marines, they're not going to find any purchase. And the Overlords are all really conservatively placed here by uh, by Raynor, so this is not going to be able to pick up any Overlords. In fact, he's going to lose that Medivac, maybe. Transfuse goes down on the Queen. Queen Team targeting the Medivac. Oh, it gets very low. Doesn't really find anything, though. And once again, after the early dust settles, it feels like Raynor is so consistently just solid through these early stages. Maru is not able to find any ground in the opening. Yeah, I mean, he at least didn't lose the medevac. That would have been pretty catastrophic to start things off there for Maru. But the Widowmine didn't find a whole lot and just Raynor every single game, except for game four, of course, just an incredible early game defense. Yeah, Raynor is, is just uh, unlike any other Zerg in, in, in the build-up stage. Like his ability to grow and then also to multitask. If, if you get into one of those scrappy games, it's kind of a crime that we haven't got to see it. This, this series where the long games have been very slow long games, like Maru's never really taken the fight to him because he realizes what Raynor's strong suit is. You want to drop four bases at once, split push two bases at once at the same time? Raynor will smile and deal with that. He'll split his army into six different groups, pull his drones away from Widow Mines. Like, his ability to do that is, is the best in the world. And that's why Maru is very consciously avoiding that so far in this series. But it, it didn't work out going to late game on Romanticide. He might be a little afraid to try that strategy again. Rock's going to get nibbled down by these Lings as the Queens move out to spread creep and also hold that front line. And he's got to actually, the Queens and the Overseer well placed here in the natural for those Banshees. And they're going to take some shots here immediately. Good start again to defense of Rainer. Next phase of Maru not finding a whole lot of ground just yet. Of course, the, the Marines are about to have stim pack here. It's just seven seconds from done. Oh, he's being so active. Those Banshees just surviving for so long. And Ling Bang going to try and ambush him, but he doesn't have enough units here. Raynor has not really respread his creep uh -oh. on that left side of the map. And I cannot believe this. Maru here in game five of this series. It felt like it started so bad. raynor has got an insane work account. But if he loses this fifth base in the top left, which I think he will, well, a lot of those workers aren't really able to mine. So he's got a new base down to the bottom right, but the Banshees continue to be annoying down there. Finally, finally, they're going to fall. They are going to fall. It feels like Reyna, I mean, especially with this hatchery dying, just doesn't have the lava here. Like, can, does Maru need to go home? He's actually got such a big army. And even though there is a similar count here for the Zerg, how's he going to reinforce this front line with the Lings if they go down to the Marines? Oh, Maru getting outswarmed there. That's a lot more Bane Lings than I expected there from Reyna. Never you mind that Ling Bane force, very healthy. In fact, Reyna feeling like it's healthy enough to hit the Terran back. Oh, a lot of his army's out of position right now. Maybe Raynor could catch him in a bit of disarray. Raynor has equal army supply. They're both on 1-1 one, one right now, and there's no Widow Mines. That's what makes this so dangerous for Maru. It's almost all on the bio and just a couple of siege tanks to hang on for the moment. He's got a fourth command center on the way behind this. It's getting up, turning into a planetary. His second factory is almost finished. He's swapping into Thors. I'm sure we'll see a reactor on the other factory and Widow Mines added in. That's going to allow him to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Mutaling Bane. But hey, I talked about Raynor taking some nasty and engagements there, you know, losing ground. The reason I was in such disbelief is because Raynor had so many units and it was a bit of a mistake on his part, but he doesn't take critical damage. Losing a hatch is not the end of the world. Losing a few Zergling Baneling is not. He's still on 98 drones and maxed out oh my here. God. And he's got great creep <laughs> through the middle of the map. Like Raynor has a ton of stuff. 
It just doesn't make sense how healthy he looks right now after losing that hatchery and also losing a lot of his army really inefficiently there. But I guess when you have 90 drones, you got plenty more bank to make where that came from. All the Marines threatening that bottom right hatchery in the middle of the map. Maru again with the hot pickup does survive and he does kill that hatchery in the bottom right. The Marines survive and pull back. Not too many banelings either. So he's going to turn and fire and target fire down two mutalisks. Nice target fire there from Maru. Yeah, really well done there, punishing. Gets another Muta. The Mutas are finally going to get on top, but that boost should be ready. Another drop comes in on the left. How is Maru active on this map? There's Mutas and wow. Massling Bane, and yet Maru is finding damage. I mean, Maru right now is doing very dangerous, very potentially ill-advisable moves. And Raynor, it's undefended. Go for it. And he right. does turn around. He goes for it, but it gives him a moment. And Maru uses that moment well, pulls the SCVs to safety. And uh, it looked like if Reyna really pounced immediately there and was super decisive, we've got a lot more SCVs at that third, but as it stands, he does still find a little bit of damage, forces a lift, a nice little bit more mining, even morphing a lot more Banes here, so he can come in for another wave, but it looks like Maru's army is in position now. It's still not a ton of Widow Mines, although they are getting made 3x3 three three at the moment with that Reactive Factory in the Tech Lab one. Oh, oh no, Maru not looking at the bio for a while there, the Banelings actually get a really good connection. Very nicely done there by Raynor. Eight SCVs and a bunch of bio. He's got to keep splitting up though, because you can see Raynor's map control is kind of lacking. He's lost his creep on the edges of the map. It's not spreading as well in the middle. You can tell Maru really got under his skin with those last few drops. And Raynor is running his army around kind of one directionally right now. He doesn't have any units split on the sides. So that means it's hard for him to defend drops, but more importantly, he's only attacking from one angle. He's coming in with a lot of Ling Bane. The mines get a shot off there, but they don't actually get a critical connection on the Lings and the Banes. The Banes once again going for the SCV line. The Muters assisting on the north side as well. Maru with a big concave of Bio though, and with the Thor surviving, he is still fine, but does take another blow to his SCV line. I really love that Raynor's Muters are what seems to continually find damage. He's going into the Ultra Tech behind it. His Queens are a little far out on the map, but this might be bait as the Lings come forward. They do indeed. Ling's not too afraid of Marauder and Thor, so they do take a good fight and force the lift up there from Maru. 20 SCVs have died. Muta's getting a little bit too close to that anti-air, though. Oh, man. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. no. Oh, ow. <laughs> uh, I don't know though. if they just got F2'd or what, but those Muta's definitely met a, a nasty end. The planetary does go down, Maynard. Seven workers with it. Raynor still has money to work with, or does he? Maru actually strikes across the map with a counter, takes a hatchery out. He does indeed, and while Reyna has a huge supply lead, it is all drones pig, it is not an army, and there is Terran army in his face and in his base right now. Two hatcheries going down within 10 seconds of each other, and it looks like even units on the right side. Reyna needs to split his army perfectly here. Not that many Banelings in the force, a lot of Marauders and Thors as well. Maru just lifts up and he's going to go for the main. Oh no, Reyna falling apart at the seams, another exposed hatchery with 26 drones on it. The Banelings too late to save it. Oh my lord, he's knocked Raynor back to four bases, three of which are very low on resources, and Raynor still fighting with mostly Link Bane. Remember, he lost all of his muters. It was the same thing that caused him problems on Romantis Life. He's got to rebuild his anti-air. If you don't have a way to punish Maru, he will drop you for days. And right now, Raynor only has ground fighting units. He's under so much pressure, he's focusing on the Link Bane Ultra. But this means at any time he's under threat, Maru picks up, moves to a new location. Raynor, he does manage to hold on for a moment here. He's still got that fifth base up on the right that he's rebuilding, but his main still in trouble. Maru is buying himself so much time with this. He's keeping Raynor off these two bases on the left. He gets another re-snipe on the hatchery. If Raynor doesn't build anti-air soon, he might be in trouble, Maynard. He's going to have to rely very heavily on these ultras to take good fights with the Marauder count of Maru is not too bad here on the defense. He's going to pull back, let the mines take some shots off on those giant units. And with the Marauders chasing, the, the ultras have to leave with a tail between their legs. Seven SCVs do die, but Maru does not care. He's still got a lot more units out on the map. Going to go for a denial on the hatchery again. In fact, the kill on that hatchery turns and fights the ultras. The ultras actually winning the fight there against the Marauders. The Liberator's a little bit too far forward. Looks like the mines might finish off an ultra here on the back end though. This is the sort of game which Raynor made a name for himself in. Scrappy down and dirty fights in multiple places. But the fact that that base got sniped three, four times in a row, the fact that he hasn't re-established the left side of the map, he is simply behind Eight. on the mining right now. He has lost far too many hatcheries this game. This is big problems for Raynor. Maru's not going to stop pushing. And it looks like Rayner just wants to get in his face and try that on for size. Can he get it done? And the north side, that base is in big trouble. But on the south side here, the hatchery also in trouble. Maru going to do more hatchery damage. Look at that ninth hatchery oh. kill. The planetary goes down. The SCVs go down. Rayner and Maru are just tearing each other apart from within.
But Maru's still got mules dropping on the right side. Raynor needs more than this. He's looking for it. He's hungry. He sees just a small pack of marines and tanks. He goes in. I love the way he pulls the lings back, lets the ultras deal with the big the big work there. But the rally oh, natural, the natural will hold on. Raynor has to pull back for now. He's got no hatcheries. He's only got his third base mining. And I'll tell you, 17, 18 minutes in the game, the third base is barely mining. Raynor is trying to micro his heart out, but if he doesn't oh, start no. hatcheries right now, then he's screwed. He's got to rebuild those hatcheries, Maynard. I don't know how he does it, Piggy doesn't have the money. Moru is in charge here. The Mutas have come back just like he wanted, but there is not enough Zerg. I think there's too much Terran. I think Moru's got it here. He's going to bring in the reinforcements. Oh no, a big hit Whoa, on those Mutas. He's going to make Mutas, but the Ultra's coming in. This is still so close. He's going to get rid of this base. Oh, wow. Rain or what well, was this the decisive move he needed? He gets rid of that base as well. Wait, 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 wait. He's killing all of Maru's mining right now. Was that actually the move he needed, Rain or that? Uh, Ma Maynard, this is crazy. What the hell? Is Rain or actually done it with that? Ah, uh, I mean, he's still in it. This definitely is not over. There is a big army lead for Maru, though. If he gets all of his forces together, he should be able to take a fight against this very bold oh. ultra army with not that much Ling Bane. Oh, this is just, he needs time. Raynor needs time. He's got a base on the left, a base on the right going up. I think the base on the right is definitely going to get taken out. He's building infestors right now. Those are the sort of game-changing unit that could do it, but he once again needs time. They're going to pop with only 50 energy. He doesn't have pathogen glands. If he could get a few big fungals combined with ultras, that is the sort of comeback composition that can win you this game. Maru. Oh, Widow Mines. Oh, lots of uh, Widow lots Mines. Of mines. Yeah, and a turret as well. The Muta's not really finding a whole lot. Oh, this hatchery. 20 drones at it. In come the Lings to pick off the bio army, but the hatchery does die. Maru lifts up what he can to save what he can. Oh, it's all about efficiency here. Oh, he's trying to try and hit the bottom right as well. But here are the Fungal! ultras. Here are the investors. Big fungals from Raina. Wow, that was monstrous. That's the first time he shows the Infestors. He's not going to get another chance. Oh. Maru was not expecting these Infestors. A lot of the medevacs went down, four of them still very wounded there. They're going to be easy pickings in a future fight. Now, Lings and Bane's coming in the left side. Uh, not that many mines anymore. And with a lot of Link Bane and not any splash damage, they can definitely just roll through. This is an orbital, by the way, not a planetary, so it doesn't have fighting strength against this army of Rainer. The Bane is coming in. Really high energy. Infest is coming in as well to drop those fungals. The split from Maru, though. A lot of the Marauders survive. The Banelings are gone. And the Infest is getting picked off as well. But does Rainer have enough to close this out? Raynor still got the base mining in the bottom right. He rebuilt his fourth, and that's mining as well. And he has once again done good damage to Maru. He's got just too much mining going. Raynor here. Oh, oh my it God. It felt like this game was going to slip out of his grasp. It's been so back and forth. But now we can say clearly Raynor is up in army. 17 supply. You've been talking about army supply. He was ahead in economy behind an army all game. Well, now he's got double the workers and he's up in army supply. His units lost tab looking way better than those earlier maps in this series. And Maru is a bit desperate. He's got to do something to slow this mining down. A widow mine, not a bad move. Yeah, eight drones going down, definitely better than nothing, but can he actually stop the Zerg force anymore? Widowmine's getting some shots off on the Ultras there, trying to keep the Muters and the Infestors alive. Rainer trying to keep everything alive that he can. Forces to lift up here at that orbital, though. Can't save that huge fungal on the bio army, a massive fungal there. The Ultras coming in for the cleanup. A lot of them will die, but there's not a whole lot of Marines. The Muters coming in also to assist. Widowmine's underneath the force, though. Oh, no, Rainer losing a lot of that front line. Ooh, the Lings though, the Lings cracking into the natural at the same time. Maru's on his last legs. Is he taking efficient, valiant, defensive fights? Yes. Is it enough though? I don't know. The Mutas go in, they get one of those Widow Mines. He wants to get those Liberators as well. The Lings still threatening. Ooh. This is an orbital. They're all orbitals. He knows that if there's no units, he can tear those worker lines apart. Raynor is going for the throat. And he's bringing in the Lings now. These Lings have been doing damage. They've been biting their time, but now they are just biting Terran units. They're ripping them to shreds here at this base. The rest of the SCVs of Maru going down as well. Maru taps out. Reina! Oh my god, he did it! The three games in a row against one of the greatest Terrans, potentially the greatest Terran alive. He did it here, and he is going to the grand final.